All right. I'd like to call the Summers Row School Board meeting of September 26, 2023 to order. Can I please have a roll call, uh, Superintendent? Yes. Mr. Murris? Oh, here. I'm never first. Mr. Marsh? Here. Ms. Tierney? Here. Ms. Wentworth? Here. Ms. Brown? Here. Ms. Larson? Here. Ms. Clark? Here. Ms. Dackworth? Here. Mr. McKell? Here. Okay. Please join me in the pledge. Thank you and welcome. Um, would like to open the floor for comments by visitors. If there's any comments by visitors today, please approach the podium, say your name and address. We'd be happy to hear you. I don't think anyone's outside. Okay. Seeing no comments, we'll go to agenda item number two, the consent calendar. What's the wish of the board uh, for the adoption of the consent calendar? I move to uh, uh, adopt or accept the consent calendar as presented. Okay, do we have a second? Second. Okay. Any discussion uh, related to any of the um, items on the consent calendar? Okay, seeing none. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, consent calendar is adopted. Agenda item number three are reports. Um, there's no report for our student representatives, uh, hopefully, our next board meeting. And we'll turn it over to agenda item 3.2, our superintendent's report. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Madam Chairperson. Yes. I have a few items I need to report on tonight. Um, first one is um, just uh, wanted to give you an update. Uh, last time when uh, Ms. Blair was here, um, she talked about uh, English speakers of other languages and talked about having 97 uh, students and I think there was some interest from board members on the variety of languages and in your board packet we put in all the different languages that are served. Uh, we have 24 different languages in Summers, which is quite a bit. And um, so just wanted to let you see that information and our students represent 10 countries of birth. So it's quite diverse language and high number of students and um, just want to let you know that and the 97 students are served by three teachers and they're all paid under the title three grant so just wanted to ha just follow up with that for you and if you have any questions um, okay um, transportation uh, things have quieted down I haven't received any emails since uh, the for a couple of weeks now I don't know if you folks have received anything, uh, but uh, principals have told me things have, have calmed down and um, bus companies have been, it's been quiet. Um, so just wanted to, I told you I'd report back on it. It seems like things have settled down and uh, we had a couple of meetings and got through, you know, the beginning of the school year and um, feeling, feeling better than I was uh, a couple weeks ago. So uh, that's that. And then um, I, uh, wanted you to see a memorandum of understanding um, that was put together for the school-based health clinic. Uh, that document will be signed by uh, myself and um, the um, CEO for the um, um, Goodwin Health Center. And so I just wanted to just let you see the document. It's been vetted by our attorneys. Their attorneys looked at it and we're ready to go for signature. I don't know if you had any questions, but just felt that you should see that before I sign off on it. Uh, that's available for your review. And um, Katie's report, I can represent Katie tonight. I don't know if you have any questions with regard to her report. It's pretty self-explanatory. I don't know if you have any questions you want me to answer. I, I can read through it if you want me to, but I'm, I'm feeling like uh, you probably can figure it on out, if that's okay. Yeah. And it email Katie with any specifics with, with that, but if there's anything r urgent right now, then nope. All right, seeing none. Great. So that's it for me. I'm pretty, pretty quick tonight. Okay. Uh, we'll move to our committee reports. Uh, let's start with standing committee's uh, budget and revenue. Oh. Oh, city sorry. Council, yeah. Oh, sorry. Agenda item 3.4, our city council um, update, Councillor Austin. Well, thank you, Madam Chair. <laughs> um, 
I will report that the uh, Finance Committee met on September 20th to take a first look at the supplemental appropriation. Uh, that will come to a first reading at the City Council meeting next week, next Monday. Um, it, by RSA, it requires a, a uh, public hearing. So the public hearing will occur prior or at the meeting where the second reading happens, which will be on October 26th, our second meeting of October. And it requires a six vote uh, approval by the city council in order to pass the supplemental appropriation. So it's two thirds of the of the nine members. So uh, that it's it's not something that can happen really quickly, but we understand, of course, the pr time pressures associated with this, and this is as fast as we can make it happen. Uh, so the second reading will occur on October 26. Public hearing will happen, and then the city council will take its vote that evening. Thank you. Board Member Tierney, followed by Marsh. Yeah, uh, yes, thank you. Um, Councillor Austin, I was curious. I, I believe I read somewhere that there was a bit of a, there was some discussion um, in regards to how, to, to spending that money, um, that maybe there, were, there was some discussion about using it in t instead to lower the tax rate. Did I, did I read that correctly? Is I The, uh, the city council always tries to balance uh, when we get when we get an opportunity to receive additional revenues. We try to balance that with uh, necessary items that we need to spend the money on versus impacting the uh, the taxpayer mm -hmm. by reducing their tax rate. So, uh, as timing would have it, of course, in October, uh, all the reports have to go to the Department of Revenue Administration, and they determine the tax rate mm -hmm. based on the revenues and expenses of the city. So uh, money that isn't specifically allocated to an expense actually goes to reduce the tax rate. So that's usually the discussion at the city council level. Uh, we recognize and we continue to hold to the fact that we can't dictate to the school board how you spend your money. Yep. We just allocate a lump sum to you, just like we do in the regular budget yep. process. Yep. So that's the same way this supplemental appropriation will work. We can't tell you if we approve X number of dollars, we can't tell you how to spend that. You can, you know, we certainly appreciate your recommendation on how you think you would spend it. Mm -hmm. uh, but in, in the, at the end of the day, you know, we can only approve the money. It's I up see. to you to determine how you spend it there. Okay, so even if theoretically all the city councilors were like, oh, well, this, I don't, we don't like what they're going to do with it because we think it should all go to lower the, the you know, the, the taxes, that, that, that really shouldn't, it, it, that's not up to, that, that, that's not going to weigh in on your decision to approve it or not. Well, I, I, I wouldn't go quite that far okay. because I think that each council will make a decision on whether they want to approve the supplemental appropriation or amend the amount or not approve it at all. Okay. And so that, that could happen theoretically. If, if there's not six votes, yeah. it's not a majority vote. It has to be six votes to approve. Okay. So if there's not those six votes, um, there won't be a supplemental appropriation at all. Okay. So, and if you say no, I'm sorry, to just, uh, um, so if the money is not, so, okay, so if we don't have those six votes, right, then what happens to that money? Then that money goes into the general fund. Okay, so the city basically keeps that right. money. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yes, Board Member Marsh followed by Demers. No? All right, Board Member Demers. I just want to ask a clarifying question. The money we're asking to be appropriated was funds provided to us via the adequacy avenue with the, is either the state or a combination of state and federal for education and students, right? So th we're asking you by technicality to give back education intended money that you might vote to put in the general fund? Am I just, I'm just making sure yeah, that I'm saying that right. Sure, Councilor has, Austin. Is there other times that adequacy money has landed in the general fund? Is this a common like debate? It was my understanding that when money comes down the pike because our students are determined to need this to make their education adequate, that the money should probably go to the education system. 
um, especially when it's above and beyond what the state had told us they were gonna give us for the year. So that's why we didn't have it in the budget. This isn't us asking you for extra money that we were negligent in budgeting. And if I'm just clarifying because that's what the people at home are gonna be wondering. Like, wait, this doesn't make sense. Why are we asking for more money? Well, this money was provided to the district, the school district, and because of how our city functions, it's a technicality that at this time of the year when unplanned money comes in, even if it's literally earmarked for students, that the city could keep it. That's puzzling so, to me, and I think there might be a lot of discussion at the October 26th meeting. Yeah, Councilor Austin, I'm sure that you're aware from your many years on the school board what adequacy aid in the grants are. Do you, do, are you, do you think that the, the city council is aware of the purpose of the money and how, it's, how it was, um, you know, how it came to be and the purpose of allocating that money from the legislative updates for an adequate education? Well, I, I'm certainly uh, confident that the finance committee understands that. Uh, the City Council will have an opportunity to debate the whole question on that second reading. Uh, and I think that's an opportunity for for you or whoever you designate to come and talk about, you know, how that money came to be and, and what its, its intended purpose is. Um, to Mandy's point, I would say it's more than a technicality. It's actually the way the process works in a city every city in the state except Concord. Uh, that money is, is uh, unanticipated revenue, you know, and I, I, get, I get why it was, was uh, coming to the district. I certainly understand the concept of adequacy aid. Um, but, you know, it is additional revenue that uh, doesn't flow t directly to the school district. It flows to the city of Summersworth. So, you know, to your point, you certainly can come and ask for that money to be allocated back to the school department, but in the end, it's the city council's decision on what to do with the city's funds. No, I understand that. I was just wondering if there's ever a time that the educational adequacy money was not spent for education. I would say that we've never had an opportunity to debate that question okay. because adequacy aid hasn't been increased in so many years. It's we, never been a question. We did, though. I think it was four or five years ago there was, an, there was um, unanticipated adequacy and Superintendent Lane came to council, and I think it was, it was under a uh, million dollars. I think it was about 600000 or something like that, and it was approved um, unanimously to be able to use that. It was unanticipated revenue when unanticipated revenue comes in any form um, above maybe maybe five, ten, twenty thousand dollars that we have to come to council, I believe, and ask for it. So it has been approved. I, I looked at the history of that before. So um, so you know I don't know if there's one prior to that, but yeah. Uh, yeah. The next council meeting is October 9th. October 9th, correct. Okay. Uh, but it will not be right at that meeting. It's a first reading at that meeting, so it's just right into the record. So there, but the, there is no conversation. There's no anything. You are certainly welcome to come, and during a public comment section, you can have whatever public comments you would like. But right. the council will not be debating it. That okay. Evening. All right. Thank you so much. I think the only the only exception, if they were to waive rules like we did, because this is money for this year, not next year, and we're already well into the year. So the next meeting is October 9th, and then the 23rd, I, I believe, would be the second reading and discussion. So we wouldn't be able to use money starting from our August, you know, start date for the school until well into the school year, you know, two, well over, you know, two and a half months into it. So there is an opportunity to to be able to waive rules for this as we did. Um, it's just up to the council if they'll, they'll do that. So we'll be able to spend well, Madam Chair, I'd like to correct that. There is not an opportunity to waive rules because you have to have a public hearing. And the public hearing has to occur within a certain time period. It can't be that same night. So by RSA, we have to have the public hearing on it. So it's- Dover had it's a public hearing in the same and they, they, they were able to, with one meeting, um, approve the supplemental appropriation that night. Well, I will, I will tell you that will not happen this time. 
a uh, public hearing will not be public hearing will not be on the 9th of October and what's the reference for that counselor I'm sorry what's the reference for why why it can't happen because that's that's the way every money bill that comes to the council is handled okay so there's is there an RSA or something in the Charter that we can reference for that or maybe I'll ask for I can I can send you that reference I don't have it uh, okay. at my fingertips. Okay. All right. Anyone else? Any other questions? All right. Seeing none, moving on to our committee reports, our standing committees of budget and revenue. Um, board Member Marsh. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, more budget talk. <laughs> um, we had a the uh, budget and revenue committee met on September 19th. Uh, we had an early budget goal uh, setting session uh, at the committee level. Um, the committee reviewed and discussed a document entitled FY25, so we're looking forward. Um, FY25 budget preparation goals prepared by business administrator uh, Katie Krause. Uh, the items associated with the goals, with the goal areas identified included, and some of these included goals um, that were provided by committee members as well. Um, special ed, so goals for next year um, for the budget development, special education needs, uh, counseling titles in different job duties, uh, including school counselor, interventionalist, mental health counselor, social worker, um, potentially funding $329,000 in personnel when the ESSER uh, grant ex grants expire or grant expires uh, regarding interventionalists, uh, preschool. We had a discussion regarding um, goals for effective teacher-student ratios. And we were purposeful with the word effective versus adequate. Uh, and I think uh, that's noteworthy. Um, also, effective use of paraeducators to assist teachers, uh, brainstorming potential non-traditional employee benefits, adequately, excuse me, adequately funding pros and cons, um, not quite sure what that one was. Uh, technical, uh, technology audit, uh, technology plan for infrastructure, hardware, and software. Um, so I'm pleased with the discussion that we had, and um, our next meeting is scheduled for October 17th. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, it was wonderful. We had our first meeting with. Um, Tons of admins from different schools, and it was great to all be in the same room. Um, one of the things that we we talked about the school-based health clinic and the fact that there is um, currently no uh, school board member on the um, SBHC committee, um, and we had talked about uh, a couple appoint appointments appointments. Um, of people uh, possibly that could could be a part of that um, another big fo focus was the communication with the community um, and, and among the schools utilizing technology and other forms of communication um, and right now everyone's feeling good about their Facebook presence um, and so there was a question about possibly in the future streamlining Facebook and Instagram because they are interconnected um, and so that's one thing that we may look at. Um, we also wanted to look at um, how to get positive news from the school district in the press and so we're kind of looking at all, all of that. Our next meeting is um, at t on 1010 um, right here in City Hall 545 in the fishbowl or the conference room right out there. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. Sorry, building uh, grounds and transportation. Uh, Board Member Hackworth. Uh, no update. Trying to get a meeting next Tuesday. Next Tuesday. Wonderful. All right. And finally, our policy committee, Board Member Tierney. All right. Thank you, Madam Chair. The policy uh, committee met just before um, our school board meeting here tonight. Uh, we finished up the discussion of uh, for policy JRA, the Student Records and Access, Access to Student Records uh, FERPA, policy so um, we the committee has um, agreed on the changes that we want to make to that policy 
and we should have that in a packet um, for the board to review at the next um, school board meeting. Um, we then spent the remainder of the time tackling a new policy, ACN. Um, this is a required, a priority um, policy that's new. The, we don't have one yet for the district. It's required by law, and it's a uh, nursing mother's accommodation status. Um, so this one, if um, anybody's been sort of following uh, the news and just other, um, I'm trying to find it now. Uh, da, 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 da. Sorry, now now I can't find it. Oh, the Pump Act. Yeah, well, it's called the, this is called the Pump Act. Um, but I was trying to think of the, uh, that other one, the fairness, the pregnancy. Uh, uh, anyway, I, I can't find it now. I don't want to take the time. Um, but this basically has to deal uh, with uh, accommodating nursing mothers um, and you know, student or faculty. Um, so we just were l reading through the policy um, that was suggested by the, uh, the NHSBA. Um, just kind of clarifying things that are, you know, to make it more relevant, specific to our district. And um, I basically, the committee, the policy committee will be looking at the um, changes next week, or sorry, the next meeting, um, and, uh, you know, agreeing to those and bringing them board, uh, forward. Um, so our next policy meeting is October 11th at 545 in the SAU office. Wonderful. Thank you. All right. Now's the time for our presentation. Do you need the sound? Okay, wonderful. Okay. I just want to introduce, uh, it's Cody Donahue. Uh, he's uh, the coordinator for the um, Summers Earth Youth Connection and I asked him if he could present and he's graciously said he would and uh, he, I know he's brought some folks with him so we're looking forward to your Presentation. Thank you for doing this tonight. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you for having me. Um, while I fumble around with this, I um, just want to say, loving to see the Hilltopper Blue representation tonight. Looks like you guys came out strong to support um, our homecoming game winners, Go Toppers. I saw a lot of you there, so that was very nice to see you there too and, and to see you kind of represent tonight. Just want to get this set up where I can see my speaker notes but I'm having a, a hard time as you can see there we go this will be good all right um so thank you for the introduction um so SYC is Summers Earth Youth Connection we're the K through 8 before and after school and summer enrichment program here it's a program of the Summers Earth School District I know you all know that, um, but just saying it for some folks at home. Um, my name is Cody Donahue again, I'm the director. Um, so just a quick look at what I wanted to go over tonight. We're just gonna quickly look at the program mission and goals, hear from some of our students, um, a quick look at some numbers such as attendance and revenue, um, some feedback survey results, a look at summer, and some of the stuff that we have going on. Realistically, I'm probably gonna talk about some of our current happenings through um, photos here that we have added um, of our beautiful children. Um, so first, our mission, this has been our long-standing mission. Um, we're in our 17th year of the program. This is our second year not being grant funded, but we were grant funded for 15 years. And this mission has, um, I don't know if it's been since year one, but it's been certainly beyond the past two years. Um, so it's to provide opportunities for youth grades K through eight to participate in safe, caring, enriching, and supportive after school environment. I guess we have since added before school as well, um, which fosters the positive development of academic and social skills for the youth of Summersworth through family, school, and community partnerships. Some of our objectives, um, goals and objectives include supporting academic success and achievement. Um, we do that through things like having homework lab or what used to be called ELS zone. Um, when we try to have our enrichments kind of echo what students are learning in school as much as we can. So if they're learning a particular skill in science, we try to include that in some of our after school enrichments. Um, we promote skills in math, literacy, arts, health and wellness, um, and character development such as decision making. We support um, social skills and character development through things like community service. Uh, we provide a safe and supportive enriching program before and after school and um, again provide or promote uh, strong parent 
and family involvement, not only in SYC, but in the school and district as well. Oh yeah, I said I would talk about some of the photos, didn't I? Is that our mascot? So this is, these are, this is a photo of um, one of our enrichments last year. It was like a community service oriented enrichment and we made, it was called Beds for Paws and middle and elementary school students made some beds for um, dogs and cats at, um, I think it's called the Pope, Pope Humane Society, the, which used formerly called the Cochico Valley Humane Society. And here is a grumpy cat, theoretically, enjoying one of the beds that were made. Um, we were able to take a field trip there and get a tour. And unfortunately, all the cats were grumpy cats. And they were like, there, you can look at them, but stay far away. Uh, but there were a lot of cute dogs there as well that the kids got to see. Um, so I would like to hear from our students kind of first. I've got some more data and whatnot to share. But um, we've got a couple students here. They're both busy students coming straight from their extracurriculars. One's coming right from dance, um, and one's coming right from football. So um, Isabel Boucher, if you could come up. You good with that? Hello, it's nice to meet some of you. My name is Isabella Boucher, and I'm an eighth grader at SMS. Today I'm here to discuss with you the importance of SYC. I've been going to SYC for years. Ever since I was in first grade, my mom signed me up, and I've absolutely loved the program. I've also loved the way the atmosphere was. I loved the staff, and I loved how they just do more than they do more than just service food and like keep down the crazy, if you will. But they, sorry, they true. I'm really truly thankful for them because they also organize like so many different fun field trips for us and they really help us with their homework and we can build strong relationships with them. While on the topic of field trips, I would like to note that these are planned and never once have I like looked at the clock and been like, okay, can, like, can we hurry up? Like, can I go home now? Like, I have things to do. I've actually always looked at the clock and been like, it, can, like can this be longer, please? Like, I, I don't want to go home. And in fact, like, I love the places we've been to. So we've been to Dover Bowl. Um, unfortunately, I was at in, I was in New Jersey for this, so I couldn't go. But my friends, they went to this place called In Flight, which was like a huge ropes course in Kittery, and uh, and I saw photos, and I was kind of jealous. Um, I couldn't go. Um, there was a, we also went to the Works indoor swimming pool, so we got to like swim. It was really fun, and. We also got to see the play Peter Pan in Manchester at the Palace Theater, and that was really like cool to see. So the lights, and, like the different costumes, it's really entertaining. And now, like our summer program is very helpful. It helps fifth graders to be able to connect with middle schoolers. So when I was in my summer, like going in between to middle school. It was so scary. I remember like seeing the hallways be like in different places each time. It's kind of like the stairwell in Harry Potter for me a little bit. Um, but I also liked it as going into my eighth grade year because with me having such a busy summer I do, let me tell you, I do not remember a single thing of square roots or how to like properly write an essay. So that gave me a nice fresh reminder. Um, and it's so much fun just doing activities like majority of these activities except for the computer and the pumpkins we all did over the summer so we got to do like just a bunch of things and I also love the enrichment so last year we got to cook there was like a paint furniture place so we got to so I saw some kids they used actual power tools and they like screw different pieces on they like sanded it down and they stained it it was really cool and they even taught us how to wood burn in like the art room. So some, I think my friend, she made like this bee or something like that. I could be totally wrong, but I swear I remember it. Um, so I swear, if you guys go to one of these places, like one of these enrichments, you will want to keep coming back because it's so much fun to do. I also love EOS Zone. So like I said before, I'm a dancer. I'm super busy. I have like 10 dance classes, competition, like it's hectic. So when Miss Halen goes, hey, you have like five different pieces of homework. Good luck with that. I'm like, thank you so much. So I get, so I get to be able to get help from high schoolers and to build a, also a relationship with them. So I get to be like, okay, how do I do this math problem? And they will help me. And I actually still have some relationships with them to this day. Obviously, they were eighth graders at the time, but they also helped me. So some are, some are sophomores and seniors. 
SYC is a great place to learn and an incredible place to make friends. So when I leave today, please remember how amazing the staff are, how amazing the atmosphere is, and the amazing like field trips and everything we go on. Thank you. So I know, I know she technically is a plant in the audience, but I did not coach her at all. I, I said, hey, is it just this was last week. Like, I have a presentation. Would you like to, to come? I know you've been a, a longtime student of SYC. She's like, yeah, I'll write, yeah, I'll write a speech. I was like, do you want to, like, meet after school? Do you want to talk about it? She, no, 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 I'm, I'll, I'll just do it. I'll just do it. Like, I got, I'll write a speech. And I'm, okay. Checked in with her today, and she whipped it out and was like, here, here, how's this? I was like, that's perfect. She did a great recap of so much of what we do. Um, and I don't think I could do a better job. So next up we have Calvin Day, um, another eighth grade student of ours, um, to talk about chess club. Hi, I'm Calvin Day. Last year I was playing a game of, this is just the story of how I started chess club. Last year I was playing a game of chess with one of my friends and he beat me and said, that was fun, let's play again. And I said, sure, why not? And then the teacher interrupted and said, uh, pack up, time to go to lunch. And so when I was packing up and eating lunch, I was just thinking to myself, why can't we play after school, like have a chess club? And waking up the next day, I said to myself, hey, we can, and I'm going to start one here. So when I got to school, I went to my two closest friends who played chess with me and asked, hey, I'm... I am gonna start a chess club here. Do you wanna join? Then one of them asked, wait, we have chess club? I answered, no, n not yet, but we will. And then after school, I went up to Mr. Donahue and said, I would really like to start a chess club. Do you think you could help? And he said, sure, let's, let's do this. Let's just go for it. And then he said, okay, we need a room and I, said, okay, let's go, I'm gonna go ask Ms. Patton. I was in go mode then saying, let's go. Um, Ms. Patton said, sure, just make sure you leave the room as good as you found it. And after saying, of course, um, she said, yes. Uh, we started having chess clubs in that room, which was fun. Uh, they were every Wednesday after school from after school to four. And the first chess club we had was, had about 20 kids there which I was really happy to see that. I was not expecting that many kids to be there. Um, and then another kid would go up to me and say, hey, do you think we could have music? And I said, sure, just give me like a song. And then we used the speaker and anything they said, um, I just made it, put it in the speaker and then it was good. And then during this, we had a tournament at the end of the year, which is the middle photo. We had a tournament and that was at, that was through high school too, so any high schoolers who wanted to come and play could do that too. And then Mr. Donahue had a couple of gift cards there and medals, and that was really fun. And chess club right after school, so you know, there's a time period so you can go and catch the late bus. It, it's free, and you don't even have to be an SYC, which you know, and the free thought I just thought was really good. And you know, I am another busy student, so if I'm not there, I just still want to make sure it's set up and people can play. And I'm still really just happy that, you know, to think a couple months ago I was just saying, hey, this is an idea and now it's a thing. Now it's chess club and we're playing chess and it's really fun after school. Thank you for your time. So yeah, chess club was one of our like most successful things we did last year, and it really came from a student leader such as Calvin of having a, an idea, wanting to start it, recruiting friends, and just like getting into it. And we just we love like when we're able to do that with SYC, taking especially like you know middle middle school student leaders and saying like, hey, like what do you want to inspire um, other kids to do, or get into? You know, kids came with no skills. Kids came who were really good. They were they t matched with each other taught each other. Calvin had a daily puzzle every day. And like he said, we had um, a chess tournament and we invited 
local middle school and high schools as well as our own. And we didn't have a huge turnout from outside the city, but we did have a few kids that came from, someone came from Marshwood, someone came from like o Oyster River, someone from Dover, and that was, and we had a couple fifth graders from Maplewood, and that was, it was just, it was really cool. Um, so we're looking to do that again at some point this year. Um, so at this time, if um, you folks need dinner, you are welcome to leave, because I maybe I should have saved the, the students for the end to keep you everybody so engaged, but um, did before they do leave, did, did I saw a hand raised. Did you want to ask um, students I, questions? I just wanted to give them a shout out. Like, great job presenting. That's super hard. I'm proud of both of you. Great job. That's hard. Yeah, that was great. You guys, uh, just, and the, the leadership that you guys both are showing and just the poise, it's awesome. And I love, uh, um, I, just, I love the idea that so many kids are into chess. I mean, that's just so cool. I, I mean, I love, dance is awesome too. I'm glad there's lots of kids in dance. Don't want to d diminish that, but just, I mean, that's something that you wouldn't necessarily think like middle school kids would be like, yeah, let's sit down and play chess. So that is, yeah, that's awesome. I also want to thank the students, uh, Isabella and Calvin. Uh, the, I appreciate that the conversational style um, of your words. Uh, I think it really, your excitement and appreciation really shine through. Um, and as far as chess, I, I love playing chess myself. And uh, I think it teaches us to be both present and look around the corner at the same time. Um, so keep that chess up and uh, it's, it's uh, similar to life. <laughs> thank you. All right, I just have to say really quick, Calvin and Izzy, I'm so proud of you both, and I can't believe how grown up you both are. And, and yeah, good job. So if we can continue, you're welcome to stay, you, or you can come sit up here, I'll give you my seat. Um, come on, come on up. Uh, but typically we have other things going on, and I know, so you are welcome to stay or leave. We won't. We won't, either way, it's fine. Yep, yeah, no judge, right? Mr. Donahue is all right? Okay, okay, okay. All right, okay, we'll continue. All right, I'm sorry, I, I think Lou and I talked about five to 10 minutes and I think we're probably at 10 minutes, so I'm gonna try to go quick. Um, so just wanna share our, our, like where we're at with like enrollment and average attendance right now. At the middle school, we have about 20 kids coming every day. Um, 46 at elementary school after school, 12 at Maplewood in the mornings, and 25 at Idlehurst in the mornings. Um, and they're, they're relatively close to the numbers last year, um, but those are, at the middle school in particular, we kind of like generally see more kids coming in like the later fall and winter, um, and then it kind of trickles down again in the spring when weather gets nice and stuff. Yeah, you have a question? Do you find that the um, absence of a late bus has impacted the middle school um, attendance this year? Um, so I, I think so as far as like homework lab, because um, what we've, we've kind of put out there is that we have homework lab, if a kid was going to come to do homework, we, we're not gonna charge them. If, you know, like if they're there and they're, they're there because they want to do an, ass um, an assignment and they're not enrolled in SYC, we would let them stay. And, um, there's been a, a few kids that are like, well, I can't, I don't have a ride home afterward. Um, I know that the, you know, like there weren't a ton of kids on the late bus every day, but I think throughout the week there was a fair number that did use it. I mean, even Calvin mentioned it with the, the chess club. That was something a lot of those kids took. Um, so um, just throughout the year, we, we served about 261 kids last year that included like some of our special events like we didn't include like the school dance or the big family engagement um, but we had a couple drop-in days um, over our February and April break and our summer program that came out to 261 like unique kids and right now we're at 143 between everyone who signed up for before care after school and who participated in our summer program so we have the SYC you know, budget. Um, these are a couple of additional things that we had last year. So we, we raised about $600 in donations. Some of that kind of was just came to us. Um, actually, it all kind of just came to us. One, there were a few families that were just like, hey, can I contribute? 
Um, we had a couple fundraisers that raised $823, um, and we had a lot of volunteers throughout the year. And when you use the like online metric for what that values out to be, it was almost $10,000. So that's just like some additional um, contribution to the program. Um, so the income target for last year, which is the like a lot of times Katie referred to it as our revenue goal. Um, if you take out the, what the city's contribution is, um, that's $140,000, and we kind of hit that like really close. So I know there was a point like in budget se season that it looked a little scary, like we were kind of like behind the mark. We ended up landing on the mark there. Um, we ended up having a savings last year. Um, I did review these numbers with Katie and everything. Um, it's you know a little funny not having her here to be like right Katie but um, but I did review this with her um, so we we had some savings last year it, it, it worked out to about sixteen thousand um, dollars that was primarily in like the staffing of uh, benefits items like retirement and FICA um, I did hold back on a couple line items as I said during budget season you know it was like are we gonna hit that target and I wanted to make sure that we had a balanced budget at the end um, but again uh, there were some like delinquent parent accounts and stuff at that time and a lot of people kind of caught up toward the end of the year um, so we ended up with that surplus so just to kind of have the visual representation of like what our our budget looks like um, so that blue is the income from like parent fees those donations also went into that um, the yellow is that 50,000 that the city contributes and then the green is is the rest of that from the school. Uh, we did a couple surveys toward the end of the year last year. Uh, we asked parents and student or parents and staff um, if they feel that SYC provides adequate time and support for students in their academics. And 84% of teachers said yes, and 100% of parents said, said yes. Um, of course. Um, you guys know you don't get 100% participation um, when you put out surveys. So um, if we did, who knows, those numbers might look a little bit different. Um, but some, some teachers that didn't say yes, and they said like NA or other, they had some recommendations like, you know, it, they said when you utilize like the SHS, um, Summersworth Honor Society, um, NHS, National Honor Society, um, high school students to provide that one-on-one, -on -one, there was some like additional engagement there. I mean, you heard it tonight, Izzy even mentioned it. Um, so they had some recommendations and one of them was also to have like a dedicated person who would touch base with teachers on student needs and so we've tried to implement that this year we have a, our seventh grade science teacher is like the go-to homework lab coordinator um, hundred percent of parents agreed SYC provides a high-quality program SYC provides nurturing and caring environment um, that we offer a variety of appropriate enrichments and clubs and close to 100%, so 97 said they feel SYC benefits their child socially, emotionally, and academically. Um, and we just also asked how, you know, our SYC programs priced fairly and appropriately, and 90%, 97 agreed, and one person actually said the middle school is low. So that was a little surprising. Um, we asked staff, is SYC valuable? Um, program should it continue to receive district and community support um, from a one to five so five would be strongly agree and the average was 4.73 and that what that looked like was 83 percent of staff saying that they strongly agree um, we also asked staff what do what does SYC do best and these are the fo top five things they said creates positive connections between students keeps students safe offers engaging enrichments, helps students grow socially and emotionally, and furthers the, or the mission of the district in the school. Um, and here are some photos of our kids visiting TurboCam, a local manufacturing company. They learned about what, not only what they make, but like the variety of career paths that are within a company such as theirs. Like, you know, it's machinists, it's engineers, it's people who do catering because they're, uh, you know, they have thousands of employees, they have people in the office, so they, they got to learn about like what a, you know, relatively medi like small, medium-sized company in the local area looks like and um, some educational pathways to get there. Quick look at summer. Um, it was very similar to the prior year. 
Um, I know last year, Nancy, Chris Thibault, and I um, presented. Uh, we had, so full day, our students that stayed for SYC, we had about 30. Um, that was a little bit lower from the prior year. We actually capped it at 30 this year, um, just for like budgetary reasons. Um, we just, without the, the prior years like COVID and ESSER funds, the budget just looked different for summer this year. Um, so we met, met that cap. Um, so what a typical schedule would look like, they'd get there about 8.30, they'd have breakfast, they'd do their morning academic rotations, and then um, students who weren't staying for SYC would leave. We would have lunch, we would do some sort of like team building activities, and then a couple hours of enrichments. Um, so they were in the morning, they all again participated in academics, they were in small groups based on reading and math, and in again small groups so they could have like focused and deliberate lessons based on um, like their their skills. Again, Izzy mentioned square roots and stuff. She's like, great refresher. Um, I think a lot of kids experience stuff like that. And then in the enrichments, we did things like cooking, physical activities. We had scavenger hunts and again, team builders, art, science. Um, some of our field trips, as you mentioned, going to high ropes course. The littles went to the Jover Children's Museum. Um, and we did a handful of state parks as well. And that's a picture on the bottom right of White Lake. And that's, I think that, yeah, that's Mount Shakora there. Um, it's a great, great lake. The kids love it there. Um, another student survey. Um, these were all mostly increased from last year, which I loved to see. Uh, students, 88% agree they made friends at Summer SYC. 91 said they tried new things. 94% said they learned new things. 91% said they felt more comfortable going into the school year, another thing that Izzy mentioned. 97% made new connections with staff. 100% had fun, which was great. 97% <laughs> said that last year. Um, and 94% enjoyed the field trips. Um, and that's it. That's what I got for you folks. Um, other than the save the date for Lights On for Learning, which is a family engagement committee event. Um, it's on October 19th, so less than a month away. At 6 o'clock at Idlehurst. It's open to all families in the district. Um, there's going to be a dinner, free books for students, um, some game of prizes for students, and a parent presentation um, that has al aligns with SYC goals of building character and self-development in your kids. All right. Thank you. I'll just open it up for questions. Yeah, uh, Board Member Clark, Tierney, and then Wentworth. Thank you for all that information. I have a, quick, a couple quick questions. Um, first one was um, I, I saw something about community service, but I didn't see what that was. Did I so, miss that part? Yeah, so, well, the beds for pause was one of the things that we did. That we like to ask the kids what they want to do, and that was a huge one last year, and we did that uh, for a few months. Um, another one was the cleanup day that we held in May, and students helped organize that, um, and they helped, they went out in the community and cleaned up a lot of trash. We went, we took a field trip to Will and Pond and did that. Um, they helped create some of the art, like centerpieces, and um, they did placemats for some of the senior events that the Recreation Department held last year. Um, they created some art that was hung downtown for the parade last year as well. Um, and they, they did gardening around the school grounds and stuff like that. Nice, nice. Yeah. I also had a question about like the price for SYC. Do we have that for the families? Yeah, so it, it ranges. So if you are a middle school student and you qualify for free and reduced lunch, that is the lowest price. It's only $40 a month. We try to make that super accessible. The middle school was free for at least about seven years or so because um, they found that it was just a barrier to, to students asking, like, hey, can I, I, I want to do this club, but can you pay for it to their parents? Um, if you don't qualify for free and reduce, reduce lunch, it's double that at the middle school. It's $80 a month. Um, so that's still only about $20 a week. It's still pretty accessible. Um, for families who are just after school and they, I could pull up the, the whole thing, but there's, <laughs> there's different rates. But it, it's about 150 I believe, for after school at elementary. 
um, and it's it's if you were doing before and after school and you didn't qualify for free and reduced lunch that's like the the highest that's 360 a month so it really depends if you're even if you're a Maplewood student doing before care it's a little bit less expensive because it's a shorter program they start earlier um, so it depends you know elementary or middle and if you're doing before or after school yeah but that is it's on our website too so if you go to just the SAU website there's a tab for families and then a tab for SYC and the, the fees are all on the website okay board member Tierney yes, thank you um, so Cody first I just want to say I love that just the idea the fact that Calvin could come up and say like hey I have this idea and yeah. that you allowed him to run with it and supported him. I just think that's great to empower the students like that. It's and it's very Maria Montessori of you, right? It's <laughs> like what are the kids interested in? You know, it's it's great. Um, so, but I did have a couple questions about the data. Um, so, the seventeen percent of the school staff who didn't, I guess, or so you had eighty eighty eight percent of the staff, eighty seven, eighty three. Sorry, I'm looking my, I wrote it down wrong. Eighty three percent of the staff said this is a great program. It's meeting all these needs or this criteria. I'm curious about the ones who didn't. I'm not sure. Think that it's the one. I'm sorry. Is this yeah? Yep. Line? Right. Anybody? E that one. Oh. Yeah, the eighty four percent. Sorry, I wrote down eighty three. Yeah, ag agree that we provide adequate time. So yeah, so. Is 8% said Ooh, unsure. Sorry. sorry, Cody, not this one. The one that was of uh, all the categories. Um, this one? E was it that one? Back one. Back one. Oh, this one. Yes. Strongly agree that, and you, and you listed a bunch of different things. So I was just curious, what kind of feedback have you received? Um, what sort of criti you know, constructive criticism have you received? So that wasn't, that, that wasn't 83 just saying yes. That was 87 saying strongly agree. So... The 4.73 was an average, and what, um, yeah, I, I didn't, it was an anonymous survey. Okay. Okay. So what, there were a couple people that did rate kind of low, yeah. like, a, like a two. Okay. And like, that is disappointing to see, but um, there, but I don't know who those people are, and they didn't They didn't elaborate. Comments. Oh, no. okay, okay. That's so the worst, right? I didn't have any comments on that. No comment. No. Yeah, because so nothing to, nothing to say, oh. Yeah, and I mean, I think the way that the question is worded could also just come into question. It says, you know, that should continue to receive district and community support. Yeah. And I think there are, this was, this was shortly after budget season. Mm -hmm. And I, I know you remember yep. we had to make cuts and there yeah. was a lot of question about this or that. Yep. And I think, sometimes I think that w when the question of this or that, SYC yeah. is one of those questions, right? Sure. So I my personal opinion is that those people might think no we don't necessarily shouldn't so, like we don't parents need should pay it. for it okay. parents should pay for parents it be, fully okay. you know yep. that would be my interpretation but okay um okay I'm, I'm not going off of any hard data there. okay no that's fine i just didn't know if that was um if, if there was any anything more la in particular or just you know anything yeah. more e explanatory like oh well we think maybe it didn't really meet students needs for XYZ or something like that um, yeah okay the other thing if I remember correctly from last summer um, were you you so the students th so the 30 who ended up attending were wasn't it the the students with um, special needs were prioritized is that I'm trying to remember what Nancy or is this, am I confusing it with something That was else? for special, like there was a summer school, there was a separate program from SYC. Yeah, so okay. most most okay. students were, were fully integrated and per, SYC students and special ed students participating in okay. a lot of the same classes, but they were separate, they were grouped based on their, their reading and math levels. Okay. There was a small, like they called it the life skills group that was more pulled out from yep the rest of the groups, um, and there was also like ESL and some other services that were provided too. Yeah. So, so have you guys been tracking metrics? Do you track metrics in term, and what, what I'm just, um, what I'm wondering is, do you see that the enrichment, and not even if it's not necessarily an academic um, enrichment, right, but just students are just, they're getting more skill they're growing you know they're, they're learning new skills and they're developing you know um 
different strengths and everything. And so I just wonder if that's, if you're seeing that translated into some of student performance. So if you like look at the cohort of kids who yeah. are in SYC, y you know. Yeah, I, I mean, every year that we've looked at the, like the students in SYC, they've consistently grown in their NIWA scores and stuff like that. Um, but where it becomes difficult is you're, you're having students from all different levels in in SYC and it, it it some of them come infrequently and it gets really challenged murky to kind of pull out like a yes or a no from some of that data but um, I'm certainly interested in looking at the the current year's data looking at it the students who participated in summer and somebody recently made like a recommendation of like you could pull you know if you're saying you've got 73 percent of students that are in the red zone in SYC over the summer, you could pull a, co a random cohort that you've got the same percentage of students in the red zone and seeing if they both grow consistently. So we're gonna, we, w we are gonna take a look at that. Um, and I know, I know special ed, they, l they look at oh, yeah. student growth from before and after very closely, if that's what yeah. one of your questions was. I, so. I was also thinking about those 90 plus students who speak all those different languages, you know, and wonder, I don't know how many of them participate in SYC, but what an opportunity if they need more English language instruction, just a real casual, informal basis, you know, yeah. to help those kids. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, board member Wentworth, and that's it, okay. Hello. Um, I was, one of the things I was um, wondering was about, and there are lots of a survey, uh, different surveys. I think there were lots of different surveys. Um, I didn't know if you had a ballpark of like ish surveys returned where they're like, you know, a hundred where they're five. Where <laughs> oh, oh, from, oh, well, well, parents were about an 80% um, oh, okay. re return rate and awesome. staff That's was about 30%. So that was definitely lower than I would like to see. Um, but I don't, I don't remember the number. Yeah. I think no, it was that's somewhere around good. 40 years. Um, and then I also wanted to make a comment that I really enjoyed from one of your surveys that someone gave you specific feedback about, um, utilizing something else and that you then took that into action. So that's a perfect example of taking feedback and growing from it. And, um, I appreciate that. Thank you. All right, board member Marsh, and I think that's it. Thank you. Uh, thank you for um, you and your team's efforts uh, and for the information tonight. It really, I think the program provides uh, opportunities for students, for kids to focus in and to also broaden their horizons and broaden their life experiences and skills. My question is, um, can you talk a little bit about how you manage uh, program payments. Um, are they collected on site? Um, are they through the mail or electronic? Um, how do you manage the, the payment, how, how, in, including reminders of payments? Because um, my mind goes to sustainability and, and, and yeah. wanting to make sure that happens. Yeah, no, I'm glad you brought that up um, because it, it was a challenging year last year because actually, our, so we hit, we raised $141,000 from program fees, but the prior year, um, the number that I got from Katie and what I'm not sure about if it included before care or not was 45. Um, so even if that did include before care and say it was 90 even, that was a big jump of an increase because um, program fees did go up um, but not only did program fees go up again it was free at the middle school but it was forty dollars a month at no sorry forty dollars a week which is a hundred sixty dollars a month at um the elementary school after school and that went up that's what the price is for free and reduced now so families that don't qualify for free and reduced lunch did pay more at the elementary school um, as well. It went from $40 a week to $65 a week last year. Um, so how fees are collected is they are charged on a monthly basis. They get an invoice sent out from the <coughs> SAU. Um, and then parents can pay in cash or check and they can send that in to, they get, it, they get their invoice in the mail. They can mail it back to the SAU or they can drop off a check um, at one of our programs and we, l midway year, 
midway through the year last year, we started accepting cash at the schools like one day a week so that we would just have it one night overnight and deposit it with uh, the SAU the following day. And that, that's when we actually started to see an increase in payments come in because a lot of families, there are, they were like, I don't have checks. I never remember. Just, you know, I remember, never remember to like go get a money order. A lot, some people were paying for money orders. This year we've also changed that system, hearing feedback from families all last year of saying, why don't you have an online payment option? Why don't you accept credit cards? And we're working on becoming part of the 21st century here. Um, as you know, it can be a challenge sometimes. Um, but so hopefully starting October 1st, um, everything's supposed to be set up and it's gonna be a parent portal through um, people's um, power school. It's gonna be linked to a student power school account and there's an option to pay with a credit card online. Go ahead, board member Demers. Some families do come part time. We haven't offered a part time rate, okay. which is something that parents parents have have asked for. Um, so that's something that I think again we're going to take another look at this okay. year going into next year, um, especially with the, with. The, the change in the payment system, that was an additional, like, really big complication um, to kind of track going into this year. So we said, we're going to look at this again in another year. And part of the reasoning is, especially at the middle school, there are a lot of students that come part time, mm. but we them. feel like the, the rate is low and accessible. So if you're paying $10 a week and you're coming two days a week, you well, know, I was thinking more like. The before care, after care type stuff. Yeah. That I, th I know a lot of people don't need it five days, but maybe would supplement some of the yeah. there revenue Yeah. There for have you. been some exceptions that we were able to make last year, for, or in this year actually, for families that are truly utilizing it very part time. Like if they were coming one day a week, or they're coming one, two days every other week because they have a specific like family arrangement or something. Okay. And we would maybe not charge them for after school, we would charge them like the, the before school rate just to okay. kind of make a compromise there. And we try to make those compromises like with families when we can, because we don't want to turn anyone away, mm -hmm. um, but we also uh, as, you know, have a budget to balance at the end of the yeah. day. So it, it can be a challenge. Thank you so much, Mr. Donahue. You're Thank you. Thank, Thank you for having me. Sorry oh. to take more than 10 minutes, yes. but I'm, I'm right. um, very happy Appreciate to be able it. to give you guys such a thorough update. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Moving right along to our policy adoptions. Uh, there are no policies for first reading, but we on agenda uh, item 6.2, we have a policy for second reading, and that's policy EFAA, uh, student food service meal payment, charging and meal account management. Do I have a motion um, to read by title only? Motion to read by title only. Second. Second. Okay, all in favor? Uh, Aye. Okay. All right. All right, board member Tierney, can you read the title okay. please? Thank you. Policy EFAA, student food service meal payment, charging and meal account management. Do I have a motion to accept this policy as written? Motion to accept the policy as written. Second. Sure. Thanks, Katie. Any discussion about this policy? All right. All in favor of adopting this policy, say aye. 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 Okay. Opposed? No? Okay. EFAA is adopted. Um, let's move to our new business, 7.1, New Hampshire School Boards Association proposed resolutions 2023. This was in your packet. Um, I think we have an update from board Hello. member Wentworth and yes. Tierney, so I'll hand it over. Yes, I am. Um, yes, um, there are numerous proposed resolutions, um, some that are supported by um, New Hampshire School Board Association and some that are not. Um, a lot of it is uh, specific wording, which happens to fall really perfectly into policy. Um, the delegate assembly this year will be held on um, Saturday, October 14th. Um, and Miss 
Tierney will be attending um, in my place. Um, and then whoever else is interested, um, I can certainly go through them all. But um, as I said, they were in your packets and everyone has the kind of um, information if there are any specific questions or... Okay. Yeah, typically we kind of support either support the New Hampshire School Boards Association recommendations and language, but again, like once you get there, they kind of delve into it deeper. If there are specifics, it again, it would be great for, to email um, uh, Board Member Tierney to s with your with your uh, ideas. But if there's anything right now publicly about about this, we'd be happy to kind of put it out there for discussion. I don't believe there is. I, I just wanted to clarify, yeah, because I did notice that um, they do want formal recommendations from the board for e each of those um, uh, proposals. Resolutions, Pro yeah. yeah, proposals. Yep. Um, so, yeah, so I if you could just clarify, so during the delegate assembly is when we just hear the, I yes. there's discussion about these led yep. by the NHSBA, and then at some later date we put a formal I actually, it all happens there. in in live time, um, and a lot of it is, you'll see, and many of these resolutions are asked for more specific, oh, really? is that they're asking, they're like, well, we might support this, but we're not 100%. We need it to be clarified more. And so during the assembly is where it will be clarified a little bit more. My recommendation would currently at this juncture um, be because I I read through them and I felt comfortable with what the NHSBA had recommended and or questions. Um, and so very similar to last year, I kind of took that I, and I think I probably went rogue on one or two things that we had talked about before. There, there was a little more if I could say it, there was a little more meat last year, um, whereas this year feels a little more technical. So for the whole board right now, typically what happens is that we kind of usually, and historically we've supported the, the NHSBA's recommendations and their language, but as the delegate, you're, you're representing the board and, and with that. So if there are specifics from the board, otherwise right now we kind of can accept the resolutions um, as the New Hampshire School Board Associations have, have um, what they support um, wholly. Yep. You just, I was going to say, I was trying to pull it up again because now I have so many. And emails. we'll have another school board meeting yeah. before yeah. this, too. So we'll have another school board meeting before? Before the before delegate this. assembly. Okay, mm -hmm. great. Yeah. yeah, because I feel like I, I want to delve a little bit more closely okay. into them. And, okay. and I, because I, I don't, yeah. Yep. So, Sorry. So <sighs> what if there is, you know, in, in our discussion, yeah, I don't know, half the board kind of agrees with, you know, supports the NHSBA's position, and then the other half is like, yeah, I'm not so sure about that. I, what, yeah. You're the delegate. I mean, yeah. you're going to have to make that call, yeah. I okay. think. I, I yeah. didn't mean to yeah. come yeah. Absolutely. Off, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. That's yep. what your role is, and, okay. and yeah. that you make that decision based on the information you have, and okay. just do the best you can. Okay. And so we do vote th at that time. Absolutely. Okay. And you'll have a world panel and everything. Nice. Very, it feels very nice. But if there's anything from the board now to communicate right now or another, you'll have other opportunities, another board meeting. We just brought this early to the yep. table to be able to discuss. Okay, okay. so this will be on the agenda then for the next um, school board it meeting for, can be. for yep. us it to discuss. It certainly can be. And if there's any updates, we'll be happy to put it under, um, we'll put it under old bu business with updates if there's resolutions. We can't offer one a new one it th that's oh that's yeah 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 but just with our temperature of the board yeah sure. no I just I I it would I would appreciate if I basically leave the next board meeting knowing how you know okay. getting the temperature yep. of, of everybody on each of the resolutions perfect so okay 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 all right moving on uh, we have no old or unfinished business our future meeting dates um, our next school board meeting is October 10th um, and f we have many policy committing committee meetings every couple of weeks uh, and the 24th we have um, is our second 
October meeting date. Any comments by visitors this evening? I do not believe there are any. Okay, comments by board members, just raise your hand if you have anything and I will call on you if you have any comments this evening. We do have a quick non-public after this, but all right. Going once, going twice, seeing none. Okay, moving on to, um, you know, we, we do, we're gonna take a break actually to, before our non-public, a recess. Uh, so I will entertain a motion to go into non-public per 91A32A. Motion to go into non-public pursuant to RSA 91A32A. Seconded. Okay. And a quick roll call, please. Oh, yes. Thank you. Mary. Yes. Yes. Mary. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 Yes.